today I'm going to take a look at the Eventide Rose. It's got similar functions to the Mogafogo, which I happen to have. Uh, this is no longer in production, and the used prices of this are skyrocketing. You routinely see them now on eBay for well over $1,000. And there's one on eBay right now for £2,000, £2, sorry, uh, and another for $2,000. So if anyone wants to take this off my hands for £2,000, I just might consider it. So the Rose is looking like a bit of a bargain at around $350, £350. So, the rose is looking good so far as a potential option for anyone looking longingly at a Mogafoga. But I'm not expecting it to sound the same. It's not an emulation of the BBD, let alone a copy of the Moog. But thought it might be nice to see how it stacks up sonically to a real BBD. You know, does it have the same sort of feel? Is it as musical? Is it as easy to fit in a mix? So I'm not gonna go through every function of the rose. There are other videos on YouTube demoing it in full. This is more about the sound. And just to let you know how I'll be doing this, I'll be using the Moog Grandmother as an input so it can get perfect repeatability on the inputs between the two units, really. They're both going into my Neve mixer and I'll be selling them as we go through. They're both using the same input signal, which is patched from the Grandmother through to the multi in my Moog CX or CVX351, the, the control unit for the Voyager, anyway. And you can see that I'm rooting them to the left and the right channel. So the rose is on the left and the mauve's on the right. And just to show here that I'm attempting to get the signals at the same level. But obviously things change as you alter the mix on them. So let's jump straight in. And that's really beautiful, isn't it? That's the two of them playing together. Uh, and they do complement each other really well. Wasn't intending to do that, but that sounds great. So let's forget about syncing them up for now. And let's just play back with the delay time and feedback and just see how they feel as we play with them. I think you'll agree, all oh, that's really nice, isn't it? I think you'll agree. That's just as nice, isn't it, as you're playing around with that knob. Just things slightly out of time. Just sort of really rich, beautiful tones. I've got them both on a 100% mix, so we'll knock them down a little bit now. <laughs> Again, all really nice that. Let's try that over here.
Again, really nice. It's a little more difficult to dial in the timings on this because you do push for the course, as I say, and then you move it for fine control. Whereas on this, you can see where you are straight away. This has got short and long. Let's do some short stuff, shall we? Try on the rows. So push delay, bring it down to the bottom, the minimum. This is 0.1 milliseconds minimum. This is 40, I think. So this is a, this can do a lot more flangey type things. So you've got more to play with on the rows. Much shorter delay times in your head, all this really metallic sounds coming out. So let's turn the filter down on the rows. Let's knock it up to sort of central-ish, shall we? Halfway. The more you play with this, the more you get used to where you're gonna sort of land once you press the course. So putting this into dark mode, let's have a listen to that. Let's turn the mix fully into this. Turn the filter down to about two o'clock on the rows, turn mix all the way up and feedback down on both of them. Again, really nice. There's the real grain and grit in that on that dirty mode, isn't there?
coming through. That's beautiful, isn't it? Can't do that on the Mogafoga. You've got clean, well, sort of cleanish and dirty. I really like the crunchiness on the dirty setting on this. So talking of dirt, they've both got delay multipliers in there. This one goes to eight times. This one goes to five times. So the original sample length is up to 10. So this takes up to 50 seconds. Uh, and this is 800 milliseconds. So eight times eight, 64 seconds or something like that. Anyway, really long, but really dirty. So I've, put, I've set this now on the eight times. And you can hear how really sort of gritty those delays are. And you'll note this is on short now, which was like a really quick slap back before, wasn't it? Or almost f um, flangey effects. Put it on long. And we wait a while. There you go, nice. Wait again. So all sorts of dirty madness. You have to do that via MIDI on this. As I say, I've got my access virus set up, so it's simple to do. On this, you press this button here. Wait, so we're on five times there. That's two, three, four, five times. So now the delay goes up to 50 seconds, as I say, so okay. And just to show that's different to before, let's just turn the multiplier off. <laughs> so obviously the delay times change, it's five times as quick. Got the filter on full so you can hear what's happening. Let's put that back on again. And you can hear that those repeats are really sort of gritty, can't you? Let's mess about with that, get some craziness out. Let's try something like that on the Mogafoga. nice good fun so just to show the difference between the dark and the bright settings on the mogafoga
Okay, let's take a look at modulation then. I've set these up so they've got similar sounding delays and I've added a little bit more brightness to that grandmother sound. And let's play the two of them together first. I was flipping the mode from bright to dark there and then I changed around with the filter on that and you can hear together they sound lovely, don't they? Really complement each other well. It's like I've got the world's most expensive stereo delay. Brilliant. I'm going to put them in a brighter mode and then I'll add a little sign LFO. Nice effect. Let's try it over here. While I've been playing with these, I've found it's much easier to dial these sort of effects in with the rows, just because you've got sort of a lot more play um, in the knob with the Moog. You've got this sort of section here before it starts going into sort of true wild effects mode. So I do like this. It gives it a lovely, lovely feel. Let's try the modulation with both of them at the same time. That's just really, really nice, isn't it? I think I've, I'm no longer feeling I've got the even tide versus the Moog. They complement each other so well. This is this is my new effect. This is my new delay pedal. It's brilliant. Really good fun, this. Now, here's a little trick with the Mogafoga that I quite like. I'll stick the grandmother on a drone, and what I'll do is I'll use the square wave on this, turn the amount to about eight, and what you get, you get like an, an octave jump. Really nice effect that, isn't it? I find it a little harder to do that on the rows, but let's have a go. Let's stick the drone back on. 
So to sum up, I mean, this is a great little pedal. It doesn't sound like the Mogafoga. It's not meant to sound like the Mogafoga. This is analog. This has got digital circuitry in it. Although, as I say, the mix, the feedback, and the filter are all analog. And it's not DSP. It uses clocking, like a bit like this does, um, but this uses a digital sampler inside, not capacitors and the like. So it does give a very similar effect, and they complement each other well. Those bits where I've put one in the left and one in the right ear sound marvellous. So if I didn't have the Mogafoga, you know, I'd be quite happy with the Rose. I tend not to use all the sort of mad effects and all the CV inputs that you can use on the Mogafoga. So I'm not sure I get as much use out of the out of the modulation sections you can on this. But the envelope follower and the like, they're, you know, something to, something to have a play with, I think. Something to link up to a modular system, perhaps. See what pops out. And it's a lot smaller. So it's a great little pedal and £350, considering it's mainly analog circuitry. It's pretty good, that. Hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. See you next time.